I think today's conversation was very, very special. I will certainly be going back and re-listening to it multiple times. Because as you say, knowing the theory is one thing, but doing the inner work, putting into practice, 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 practice is absolutely key. Hello, I am your host, Catherine Edwards from the Live, Love, Learn podcast. And once again, I'm back with my amazing co-host, Danielle Matthews from the Single Truth podcast. Now, Danielle, we have just had the second in our series of just absolutely wonderful conversations with Yogi Amrit Dasare, who affectionately known as Guru Dev. And this time we were following on from last discussion on the ego, um, to extracts from this book, The Yoga of Relationships. I We've just finished a beautiful meditation with him. How was it for you and what were some of your key takeaways, Danielle? Well, I think I'm still coming back and <laughs> getting grounded here. Uh, Guru Dev holds such a beautiful presence. And anytime I do a meditation in his presence, be it through Zoom or in person, I, I go really deep. So I'm incredibly grateful that he gifted that to everyone. And I hope everyone sits and experiences that but today's conversation I mean I've been reading this book now like going back through it I have so many highlights in here and getting to actually go in with him and like dissect it because it's a lot of theory in the book which all sounds good and you can go okay yeah I get it but then when the rubber hits the road (laughs) and it's you know you're getting challenged in life with your partner or with politicians decisions and when you actually have to apply what he's saying like it can be difficult. And, you know, I, I was really grateful for yourself asking some questions and I was bringing up stuff from my own personal relationships of like, how do we actually deal with this in the moment? Because it's not so easy. You know, we've reached a time where we can't keep projecting outside of ourselves and accepting something else to change. We have to take self-responsibility and, you know, just keep moving forward. Otherwise, our world is not going to change around us if we keep doing the same thing. So I'm with you. I go so deep with his meditations. They're short people, you know, I didn't really time it, but probably 10 minutes. And I'm very excited to see the feedback. Danielle, I'm really excited that Guru Dev has offered both our listeners the exciting opportunity to ask him some questions on the next video. So that is a great opportunity for anyone listening, isn't it? It is because when you go to apply this in your life, you're immediately going to get a kickback. <laughs> like, well, it can't work here. What about this situation? Or this is unforgivable. And he has this beautiful spirit. What I love is he when he teaches and he you take these intense situations to him, he breathes this peace into it. And he says, no, no, no. It really is as simple as just dissolving it. Now, I think he said today, fire the judge and hire the witness. Yes, And I thought, whoa, what a profound statement to realize like all of that chatter in the mind, that's the judge, the ego. If you can just put that aside and witness what's going on and create some distance from it, you realize that like you do have more choices than you think. And it's so empowering. And I think it it can be difficult though, Catherine, honestly, for people to take this in because Guru Dev leaves no space for you to be a victim of circumstance. (laughs) He says Like it's your responsibility, any conflict in your relationship, problem you're having in life, at work, whatever it might be, like it's squarely rooted within you. And I think that's a hard pill to swallow initially. But then once you realize that, I'm like, it's the most empowering thing to realize, wow, no, I have the ability to shift and change and and thus create the world that I want and the relationships I want. Yeah. And, And when people are listening, we're just giving you a snippet here. So please do listen to the full interview. Let us know in the comments below what you think. Um, Danielle's contact details are minor there. And we will be collating a list of questions and deciding how to do the third interview, whether to do it as a live or to read out questions from people. Um, so we will be doing that. And um, don't worry, there's nothing in his teaching that says that you should stay in abusive situations or abusive relationships, which I think is really, really important to point out. But he gave certainly us all some really clear guidance today about how to distinguish when that's the case. 
So as usual, sit back, enjoy the full episode. Please do let us know your comments below and stay curious, stay free. Danielle and I are thrilled to welcome back our very special guest with us today, Yogi Omrit Dasari, whose disciples affectionately refer to as Guru Dev, for today's topic of how to have perfect relationships. Now, this is such an important topic for absolutely everyone. It impacts all areas of our life, our happiness and our interactions with others. I personally am so happy to discuss this with you, Danielle and Guru Dev, because I know we're all going to get so much understanding about how managing our relationships can transform all areas of our lives. So, Danielle, you've been working with Guru Dev for quite some while now. So please do tell us a little bit more about our wonderful guest today. Yes, absolutely. I would love to. Uh, I'm excited for this conversation as well. You know, I've been working with Guru Dev for the last seven years. Uh, He just himself celebrated his 90th birthday. Gurudev grew up in India, and he met his teacher when he was a teenager, which lit something up inside of him that I would tell you is still burning very, very bright today because he has dedicated his life to distilling the ancient yogic teachings and the secrets that were revealed to him by his master, Swami Kripalu. Uh, Gurudev brought these teachings over here to the West, and he was part of the initial craze that took off back in the 60s and has grown into all the diverse yoga practices that we see here today. Uh, Gurudev established the largest holistic center here in North America. Uh, When it was at its uh, greatest bit, it had 350 full-time volunteer resident staff, and they had the capacity to accommodate over 300 students. Uh, This was the Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health. And Gurudev left Kripalu in the mid 90s, and he started to refine his own teachings even more into what is now known as the integrative Amrit method. I am yoga, I am yoga nidra, I am yoga therapy, and quantum breath meditation. In 2001, he actually founded the Amrit Yoga Institute here in Salt Springs, Florida, which is where I currently live, and he presently resides and teaches from. He was one of the first to arrive here in the U.S., and he is the last living guru of this initial wave of teachers. And something that Guru Dez always says that I truly believe as well is that if it doesn't change your life, it is not yoga. Now, Guru Dev has authored many books, uh, but today we are going to be talking about the book, The Yoga of Relationships, which has won over uh, has won five book awards. Yes, Catherine, I've got so many notes in mind, too. Uh, <laughs> It's one that I have not been able to stop reading since I got it. It is highlighted, and uh, we are looking forward to the discussion today around this topic. Wonderful. Well, Gurudev, that's an incredible bio um, by anyone's standards, and everyone who's listening today is going to get so much out of this conversation. And as a special treat to everyone, Gurudev is going to treat us all to a meditation at the end of this interview as well, which will really finish it off beautifully to us. So as Danielle's introduced, today we're going to explore the spiritual answers to problems when it comes to relationships using one of your wonderful books, The Yoga of Relationships. Now this book, um, the links for how to purchase it will be below because this is something that everyone needs to be reading. It is absolutely gold and it takes a lot of skill to really put such complex matters across so that people of all levels of understanding and experience can understand it. So I've, as you can see, I've got marks all the way through it and I keep dipping back into it because there's so much information in there. So what we're going to be doing is applying these principles. um, When the challenges get really hard for us in our day-to-day life, we're going to be asking you some really useful questions about how we can really implement your teachings into everyday lives and the challenges that we all face. So my first question for you, Guru Dev, is first and foremost, how are you today? How are you doing? I'm doing so excellent because I live in the present moment. I don't learn, I have learned how not to live in the past because most people live their past in the present. They are never happy with their past. They are never happy with the present. (laughs) So how to live in the freedom of the memory free living in the present? 
And that is what is so important to live in the present moment where you are in relationship with your own higher self. That's so, so true. And one of the things, look, this always happens. The cats come to join me and they're all over the desk. So I will move my water quickly. So <laughs> in the foreword by your lovely editor, um, Lily Ivy, and if I'm looking to the side, it's because I'm reading extracts from the book that we've picked out. Um, Lily says in the foreword that all relationships are based on the relationship we have with ourself and ultimately the self. So Guru Dev, can you start by explaining for us, please, why this was such an important book for you to write and explain the above statement, um, particularly distinguishing between ourself and the self. Right, right. So the, the problem we face in relationship with people in the outer world is faced by the relationship we have with our own self. In other words, the, the way what I see in the outer relationship, when I am interacting with other person, where am I interacting from? Is from my memory relationships I had in my past. So most people, they do not know that when they are interacting with outer world, they're interacting from their unconscious toxic memory center, toxic memory stress center. So they are interacting through their own relationship with themselves, memory in the, with the outer world. So this is most people do not know. So they think that they are interacting with the other. No, the other is triggering your lookalike memory of your past. And then you are seeing what is present through their past. So you are not in tune with what is present. So you are having conflict with the present, but that conflict is with the memory in your own self of the past. So you are in conflict with your self-image that is built into the form of PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder of the past. So you are interacting with outer world through that as a reactive perceiver. You are not seeing what you are seeing. You are not hearing what the other person is saying. This is why there is always a miscommunication when you are reactively interacting with the other because you are seeing the person from the past who is present and then you cannot see what you are seeing now so you are speaking from your past yeah so this is what christ meant when he was addressing a large crowd he said if you have eyes see if you have ears hear he is not he was not talking to the deaf people and the blind people. He was talking to humanity that cannot, that sees everything through the past. So they cannot see what is present. And every, they are hearing everything from their pre-programmed PTSD. Therefore, they cannot hear what is said as it is said. And that is the fundamental of my teachings that what what you see out there is the effect the cause is in the eye of a reactive perceiver that perceives from the past and misses what is present yeah thank you <laughs> yeah oh gosh we could have the whole discussion around this <laughs> i know it's a lot to to take in and you realize like relationships are such an incredible playground then to, to realize these teachings and to actually then apply that. And I want to bring up, you you have a couple of one-liners in the book, Guru Dev, that I'd love for you to elaborate on. Um, and the first one is, you say, no one ever needs to go into therapy or see a psychiatrist. We just need to fall in love. 
And another place to say, love brings the closeness we crave, but it also reveals what we want to hide. So can you share with us what you mean? What is it that we are hiding and why does falling in love reveal it? So when we fall in love with somebody, we are attract when we are attracted to somebody, it is we are attracted to what we expect to come from them. Mm -hmm. So what you expect to come from them is separated from you. Means your mind lives in separation from who you are, and it expects the other to provide. So the ego mind is born as a half polarity, male polarity. It's, it is born separated from female body. So it looks for other female body relationship to feel complete. So that's why it calls love. Love is supposed to bring two people into harmonious interaction. Instead, because I'm looking for the love that I don't have, I cannot create it from outside. So the love, so the once I accept myself as I am, I have the power to accept other as they are. So if I, just like I expect from myself and I cannot get what I expect from myself, I cannot get anything I expect, expect from the other either. So expectation is the fundamental separation between you and yourself that keeps reappearing between you and the other in every interpersonal relationship. So what I'm saying is your self-image you are separated from, you don't have a good relationship with it. And, and then if you try to find it outside, it won't, you won't find it because the cause is hidden inside. And so if you remove the cause, that's why the yoga of relationship, yoga of relationship means changing your relationship with yourself. So right now, you are not in relationship with yourself, you are in relationship with your mind made sense of self image. And so everything that you expect from yourself doesn't come. You expect it and it doesn't come. Well, then ego says, let's try to get it from somebody else. <laughs> so they do not want to do the inner work to drop to accept themselves. And when you accept yourself, that is, you can accept others. So most people reject problem is self rejection, self judgment. And then when they are separated inside, they are seeking unification of loving relationship outside, which is not possible. Right. Outside is the effect, inside is the cause. So if you remove the effect, it will be temporary solution. But when you change the cause, it's a permanent solution. Because cause of separation and expectation is in the eye of a reactive perceiver. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you go, what you do or who you are with, you will create that separation. But if you, if you are integrated inside, you will create harmony no matter where you go, what you do or who you are with. That's why, that's for, that is my yoga is a self-discovery process. You're, discon uh, you're connecting to yourself. So when you are in harmony within yourself, you can find harmony in the outer relationship. Beautiful, yes. yeah. That, that's so beautifully put. And uh, like last week, anyone who hasn't gone back and listened to our discussion on the ego, you will find the um, link for that below the video because this links in beautifully. So so building on that note, um, Guru Dev, um, another quote from your book, um, any sincere attempt to create healthy and intimate relationships is guaranteed to bring up everything we've been running from 
for an entire lifetime, probably many lifetimes. In relationships with others, we must face all that we've been avoiding in ourselves. So my question's a practical one. These things that come up that are uncomfortable, which is why we might have been hiding them either consciously or subconsciously, like guilt and shame that lots of people feel. So how do we begin to actually deal with these? That's a very important question. That is, that is how to find, how to create the relationship with yourself. That is why yoga says your relationship right now is your identification with your thoughts as who I am. So when you identify with your thoughts, you are saying, what I think about myself is who I am. And what I think about you is who you are. Well, that's a fundamental relationship problem. When I think about you, and I, I believe that's who you are, that's why I am in conflict with you, like I am with my own thinking. Mm -hmm. This is so subtle that most people, they just make other person responsible for their for causing them unhappiness actually it is our own perception that is in conflict with ourselves that we superimpose over other and say you are saying that the reactive perceiver is a subject and reactively perceived person is the object so reactive perceiver appears is the reactively perceived object. You see, reactive perceiver. The subject appears in the reactively perceived object. This is so fundamental to all human suffering and all human miscommunications and conflicts in all the roles we play as husband, wife, parents, children, employer, employee, everywhere, teacher, student, so we think this is normal. What is what we think this is normal? We think that what I think about you is normal. That's, that's the biggest misperception. You are not at all what I think about you. Mm -hmm. What I think about myself is real. No, that is completely false because what I think about myself comes from my pre-programmed PTSD or toxic memory stress disorder of my past. So I am living in my past and my past is having conflict with the presently who I am. That is the major relationship issue that we have with ourselves. And then because it is within in the reactive perceiver, it comes out no matter where you go, what you do, or who you are with. So everything that you have reactively perceived in your love life, family life, work life, or social life is was created by the way you perceived it, not the way it was happening. <laughs> so that's why Every, all information you have, all the anger, fear, jealousy, all those thoughts are false thoughts that you suffer from, that ego suffers from. Mm -hmm. So this is very simple, very profound truth. This is why yoga says, first clear your mind, withdraw from identification with your mind, that you are not. So mind made sense of self image has lived in the memories of the time and have reactively lived with the timeless presence. So that means you have lived in conflict with yourself. The ego mind has lived in conflict with the timeless soul presence that I am now. So Gurudev, to just go on that a little bit more. So in a relationship, I say get triggered and I get angry, 
right? And so apparently there's a lot of anger that's inside of me that I've been avoiding dealing with. So now I'm getting angry in the moment. I'm blaming my partner because they did something that made me angry. I'm realizing what you're saying now is no, 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 that's, you know, that's toxic memory stuff, this anger that's within me. But what do you actually do? Because I don't want that anger inside of me. I don't like that it comes out. So, I mean, how do you actually process through your own stuff as it's, as it's coming in? Like you said, that your partner made you angry. What really happened? He triggered your memory that made you angry. So memory is the cause. So if you remove the cause, the problem is gone. That's how simple. So, so the person who triggered is the effect. The memory that got triggered in you is the cause. Once you know this truth, you remove the memory. Do not, do not believe in everything you say about him. You are free. So you, this empowers you to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Because if you take the responsibility for creating that reactive misperception in the past, and when you allow yourself to accept it, you have accepted the, the other person also. Yeah, it feels easier said than done to let go of a memory. <laughs> like, sometimes they're really stuck in there. And I, I wonder how you just release them. I mean, so, is it that easy that you just do? Or are there tools or practices to help release We are stuck, we are stuck in the memory because memory carries the addiction to the pleasurable events and that that has that change into painful traumatic events mm -hmm. so the memory is like oh my god i got it i lost it now i want to get the positive one so that's why and i cannot get the positive outside because negative memory lives inside so memory is of the attractions and repulsions to the reality. So reality is not the problem. Dividing it through what you like and what you're afraid of creates the separation. So if you know this truth, then you learn how not to reactively think about the other and not be the judge. So I say fire the judge and hire the witness. Mm -hmm. means, means witness what you are saying, don't believe it, and you have removed the cause. That is the yoga. Yoga means witnessing the modifications of your mind, means witness your thoughts of what you like and don't like. When you withdraw from them, you are freed from the pre-programmed reactive seer of the past. Now. You, you don't have conflict with the reactively seen problem because reaction is removed. Right. Well, relationships certainly create a lot of opportunity to practice this <laughs> and apply it. <laughs> well, before we move on to another quote, because this is such an important point you two are discussing here, but that um, I, I've had a lot of interaction from sort of listeners and things, and there's a couple of practical examples, one in particular, related to what you were just talking about. So the last three years have brought up a lot of emotions and separation within families um, and within other relationship groups, social groups as well. But let's talk about the crux of within, within a family. So Guru Dev, going back to what you were just discussing with, with Danielle, say you've got a situation where you've got uh, two parents, but they're split up now, but they've got custody of a child between them. And if there's a major disagreement between those people about a, a quite an important decision relating to that child, so it might be medical intervention or something like that. We all know what we're talking about there. Now, both sides, both parents have got very different opinions that are not meeting at all in the middle. And of course, the one who's been most affected by this disagreement is the child that one might not be old enough to make their own mind up 
or be allowed to make their own mind up, or if they do, they are automatically going to be disappointing one parent. This is something that's really fitting people. How how would your teachings deal with that situation of letting go? So the child happens to be the issue, but any anything could be the issue. Yes. Between when there are two people in conflict, that one person's likes and dislikes, attraction and repulsion comes from its past. So not two people, but four people are in conflict with each other. Yes. This is to understand you are not you are not who is trying to get the child. Your fear that was programmed by the past will will see and justify he cannot handle it. Sometimes younger can handle better than older. <laughs> older that could be so that is that but they will justify it. So just this justifying uh, justified rationalizing uh, approach is coming from the pre programmed memories of the past. So if you let go of that, then you can see objectively who can handle the child better rather than subjectively. So objective seeing issue for both of them would solve the solution. But the person who is subjective, one person is subjective, another is objective. The objective person will let go and let it be in the, and will see the proper solution rather than solution my way. Okay, because okay. it's objective. Otherwise, both are in conflict with my way. The objective person says no, right way. Right. <laughs> see? So the conflict disappears if both can be objective. So why what why do we have lawyer in this kind of case? Because lawyer is more objective than either one of them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he can see if they can make them see objectively and solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so tricky, isn't it? As Danielle was saying in the real life example, because in the real life, one of the partners might be doing this inner work and the other partner might not. So therefore the cold communication channel can break down. So that is why the the person who is in conflict cannot make other person objective. Yeah. So the, that's why we need a counselor. That's why people go to the counselor to see if the other person can look at it objectively as well. Mm. So my whole, the reactive perceiver is in a subjectively in conflict with its own self. And that is object and subjectively in conflict with who or what is present outside at the same time. So just the way you are in conflict within, you end up being in conflict with who or what is present in the outer world. This is, this is humanity is not used to think that way. And this is, this is why I call the yoga of relationship. Yoga means how you bring integration, means yoga internally, rather than seek it to be from the other. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly gets difficult, but I guess that's why we're here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, relationship. Nobody, nobody wants to do the inner work themselves. They say, I want to find somebody who will do the inner work for me. So, yeah. so they will love me. They will accept me. I cannot accept myself. I cannot love myself. When I'm upset, when I'm angry, I want them to love me and accept me. How is it possible? And then they call it love. Honey, if you just accept me, no matter where I am, I want to marry you. And that's what they say in the earlier time. 
I accept you just the way you are for the rest of the life in happiness, unhappiness, success, failure. It's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, no, isn't it? No, but they say that way. <laughs> yeah, they do. Well, this is interesting. So another quote from your book that I, I feel like is relevant to this. You state that in today's culture, we are more focused on finding the right partner rather than being the right partner. And this is yes. why divorce is so commonplace. And so the question I had when I read that was, well, how do you get yourself ready for a relationship? And how do you work on yourself so that you can be the right partner? So then, then you don't have to be perfect in self-acceptance all the time, but you have the intention for accepting yourself when you find yourself in conflict with yourself or with the other. And that is the intention. So now you can be in relationship with integrative intention. So you are adjusting inside rather than constantly depending on the other. So the, it starts, you can be, use relationship as a training ground for integrative loving relationship beautiful i just you just really triggered something good in me there so when you were both talking about that when you think about people who work with animals and animals are reading our energy not what the words that come out of our mouth but really reading our energy so we've all seen examples for example where there might be a very aggressive dog but the dog isn't aggressive with every handler. They're picking up on the energy of the handler and adjusting the their behavior response to that. So I, I, I think this is where sometimes animals can be such brilliant mirrors for us, Guru Dev, because they don't have, they're, when they're reacting, they're not reacting from their ego. They're honestly reacting for our energy. Does that make sense to you? Yes, see the... This is the first important part that human beings are born with the animal subconscious instinctive inner body, yeah. with self-conscious ego mind. So we are living with animal body, with human mind. Mm -hmm. And animal body does not react because it does not react from the memories of the past. It, it, it can react from the mechanically lived bodily felt memories of the past, but not psychological memories of the past. So, so animal body and human mind, so human mind acts from the memories of the pre-programmed PTSD and reacts to who or what is present. And that reaction happens to the body that is present now, also at the same time. So how you react to outside happens to how you react to your own body inside. Mm. This is not understood. This is why, this is, this is the revolutionary thinking, revolutionary approach to breaking down all your barriers and boundaries built into your body and mind in the memory of the past so that you can live in harmony with the body that lives in the present because body yeah. is the abode of god as yoga says and that's what christ meant when he said your body is the temple of god that's exactly the way it is yeah and i was just thinking danielle where you know you can see why if you really have that intention then that will be reflected to how everyone perceives you and the energy you're giving out. So it is the intention. So you can enter with integrative intention in your relationship with the other. So integrative intention means I would integrate my inner conflicts within myself internally as it appears to come from externally. And the other one will also try to do the same thing. That's, that's, a, that's a good relationship. That is called, I can call it, it is, each one is trying to re-enter the soul. Mm -hmm. So it is called soulmate relationship. 
you are trying to meet at the level of the soul rather than at the ego mind. Hmm. Well, that's lovely. That yeah. is lovely. <laughs> Over to you, Daniel. Wonderful. Well, let's grab another quote here. So to go deeper on the topic as it relates to ourselves, but also the awareness of our partner, uh, you say in the book, emotionally charged conflicts may appear to be directed at the other, the offender, but we are really turning it against ourselves. We are the only ones who are truly suffering. We may have a problem with another, but ultimately we are responsible for taking it to the level of crisis. My question here is, and we touched on it a little with, with the partner not being aware, like they're not consciously aware of this dynamic. They're not alert to the fact that their ego is playing a part here. So maybe the partner is getting upset uh, because they're feeling like, you know, you're controlling them, but really you're just asking for a certain thing to be done, but their inner issue of control is coming out in the moment. How do you help them gain this awareness? It doesn't seem like it would be possible to do it in the moment, but how do you no. see? That's a good question. See, when the, basically, you are trying to live in harmony with the other by being in harmony within yourself, but other is not. So if you, when the other, when you accept the other as they are, you don't complain about it, you don't judge them, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, how? He would say, this is different. So in the beginning, he will not accept you yet because now what are you up to? You are doing another game with me. So if you keep accepting unconditionally, allow them to be who they are, you are also allowing yourself to be who you are mm. at the same time. Then eventually, with few encounters, he will begin to see that you are not judging them, you're not pushing them, you're not trying to control them, then they will also begin to be in harmony with you. They will, because you are consciousness, your fragrance of love and harmony will eventually touch them and they will come back into it. Oh, beautiful. Okay. I should be making notes of all these things. I'll go back and listen afterwards of all these things I've got to practice. There's a lot on my list, um, but I'm getting there. And honestly, this book is just such a wonderful help. So anyone who's listened to this, please do get the book. You're going to love it. So Gurudev, I've got a question that's big on a lot of people's minds, which is let's broaden it out now to our relationships more to society level. So let me read a quote from your book. Sometimes we must deal with mental errors, not only our own, but those of others. Rumor or exaggeration are commonplace. They are externalized mental processes individuals feed into one another. Patanjali identified error as false knowledge, a corrupting form of ignorance. When facts are exaggerated and rumors run rampant, reality is abandoned and valid judgments are lost. No one can control the thinking of others. Once we see that, we realize people's thoughts have little or nothing to do with us. So one of the things I wanted to, um, and then you finish off by saying, recognize that no one can hurt us and elect, unless we elect to take it personally. Oh, so this is a important statement. <laughs> so, so let's say that way. When most people, who have been abused in the past, they are, they're, they're keeping like a target sign on their side. If somebody even is not attacking them, they put their target in front and says, see, you attack me. Interesting. So Interesting. it is their memories of the past that feels attacked. So if you learn that you are, once you know this truth, you know that this person, what he says, I never heard. I am hearing what I, is it differently from my past. So when you let go of what you heard as being false, the real will 
the ob your objective reality will become more real. You will see the other person, what they said, what they said objectively, you will hear it subjectively through the presence within. So it is, it is really, again, seeing yourself as a witness to what you are thinking and what the other is thinking. You let the thoughts pass by so that non-reactive perception of the objective reality begins to emerge out of it. So in a situation, I'm going to raise something very controversial here, but just to really put it in context for people. So something like where um, society leaders at large, um, something like the Nazis, at what stage do you step out of that objective observation to take action as a responsible citizen to stop some atrocity or, or some believed atrocity happening? Does that make very sense? Good, very good practical question, because you, you try to be objective in your relationship with the other, and you try it, and you try it, and you try it, but they are so far deep in identification with their own memory trauma, they cannot come out of it. Mm -hmm. That time, you take the action and separate yourself in some way, so that you are not just living as a victim, but living freely uh, to let the other person work it out themselves. So that is, but you have to try to let, use that to let go your own past. Mm. And once you know it is not responded by the other, even after practicing it consistently, you take new action. Mm. Yeah. But then you have done your inner work rather than just think other as a responsible and you are running from it. Yeah. And there's a totally different result when you're trying to create create change or take action and you're in an emotional reactive state versus having this awareness and saying, okay, I'm going to let go of my reaction to what's going on, but I still see that this isn't okay and to work from a space where you're more grounded and at peace, I think it opens people up. You know, when you come from that heart space and you're not being emotional and you're not trying to trigger anybody, you're just trying to, you know, bring sense to the situation. It's, you can and it is, easy to do that. it is not easy to do that. No. Because <laughs> you're so vulnerable that you will be abused again. Right. You will be taken advantage of it. But who is talking? Your past. Mm. You have to keep dropping your past again and again. That means you are advancing into your inner dimension towards the holy oneness within yourself. So you are doing inner work while you're trying to bring outer world in harmony. Yes. And it is not working. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, easier said than done. But when you just keep coming back to these teachings, it's so it's so powerful, and you have you can practice it daily. I mean, with what's unfolding. So, the next quote uh, that I want to talk about it has to do with forgiveness in relationships, Guru Dev. And you you wrote something. You said when you truly forgive with your heart, not your reasoning, you are accepting your role in the relationship and setting yourself free. And as I was pondering that, I just, I started to wonder, so people say, you know, I forgive, but I won't forget. And I'm wondering, is that not really heart forgiveness then? And when you forgive someone from the heart, do you just hold no memory of what they did? Like, aren't you supposed to learn <laughs> if people treat you a certain way? Like I, I have a little bit of difficulty understanding the forgiveness. So forgiveness, this is, this is where, this is why I say, when somebody gets really sick because of their traumatic memory of somebody who abused them, so the psychologist will say, forgive them. I know this is, they know that it is your own reaction that is making you sick to them. You hold them responsible 
he says, no, forgive them. They are not responsible. Do you understand? <laughs> so if you really forgive them, it's still not complete forgiveness. You say, I forgive you, but I know you abuse me. You took advantage of me. Yeah. Still remains. Yeah. But if you follow the truth of accept them just the way they are, accept yourself just the way you are now, you are forgiving both them and yourself. The forgiveness is complete. Mm. It's liberating. If you could do that, it's liberating. But that seems very difficult <laughs> to be able to forgive some things. Truth is not easy to live with. <laughs> <laughs> The one center says everything. Yes. <laughs> and the lies are very easy because it allows the false self image to survive by the lies. Mm -hmm. I have got, I'm, I'm conscious of the time, so I've got one more question for me, if I may, and um, talking for all the parents out here now. Now, in your book, you say very early in life, I saw that what weighed me down and disturbed my peace of mind the most was holding someone else responsible for my happiness. Now, as parents, we often feel responsible for our children's happiness. Can you give us some advice on this, please? We, we want the happiness. We obviously, all parents want happiness for their children, but they haven't worked out their own happiness for themselves. Mm. So they don't know how to do it, and they do not, their happiness, expecting their happiness for their children. They don't know how to help them to be happy with themselves. This is what I'm doing. I have worked out my happiness with myself without depending on other to make me happy. Mm -hmm. Once I have that freedom to be who I am, and I can make what I want myself, happiness for myself. I have all the power to help my children also. But until then, it's just the emotional desire for, for my children not to be unhappy by how I made myself unhappy. Don't do the mistakes I have made. How is it possible? It is just a wishy-washy desire that doesn't have any meaning in real life. I completely agree. Yeah. And, and you know, children do what we do, not what we say. So do animals. So, you know, you can't fool them. You can't, can't fool them. They are picking up what you're really feeling and the example you're really giving, aren't they? So. So let's have meditation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so are you happy to go into the meditation now? That would be wonderful. Yes. So let us do something. If you can, if you are sitting on the chair or if you are sitting on the floor, you can see, do one simple thing. You breathe out as you bend forward and breathe in as you come up. Simple breathing okay let's do that to change from your thinking mind to feeling body so this is our meditation is moving from thinking mind to feeling body to the oneness of experience called yoga called meditation That's it. so sit up straight and move from your hip joint bend forward as you exhale, hold the breath out, hold it out there momentarily, and then breathe in as you come up slow and steady. Repeat that again. Inhale as you come up. Hold the breath in for a momentarily. Keep your eyes closed while you do this. Breathe out as you exhale and bend forward. Hold the breath out momentarily. 
enter into stillness, relax. Come up as you breathe in, hold the breath in, relax. Focus your attention on the third eye and then exhale as you bend forward. Repeat this few times. Stay inwardly focused, connected to your breath and the co coordinated movement. Do it on your own time. Coordinate your breath with the movement. Let your movement and breath be steady, unbroken flow. Your breath and your movement, steady, unbroken, unbroken flow. In a very relaxed way. Okay, let's do the last one. Breathe out as you bend forward. Hold the breath out. Stillness. Come up as you breathe in. And relax. Now, next breathing technique is inhale through the nose and exhale through a straw like lip move. Open your lips slightly and exhale as if you're exhaling through a straw. Repeat that again. Go ahead. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through a straw. Inhale through the nose. Make your exhalation long, steady, unbroken flow in a very relaxed way. Breathe in through the nose. Exhale through the small opening between your lips. Make it long, steady, unbroken flow. And at the end of each breath out, keep it out for a moment. Bring your attention to the third eye between your eyebrows and drop into complete stillness. And then exhale. So repeat this few times on your own. Notice with each exhalation, your mind is completely still, empty, and peaceful. You will feel that with each exhalation. Your attention will naturally go to spot between your eyebrows. In yoga, it is called third eye. Now relax, breathe normally, and the third exercise is you inhale as you take your head back, all the way back, inhale, your chin to your ceiling, 
all the way to the ceiling. Do not strain. Exhale as you bring your chin to your chest. Inhale as you move your head back. Breathe inhalation is accompanied by the movement of the head. Exhale as you bend forward. Inhale as you come back to normal. and feel the pulsating energy field in your brain. You have created a shift from thinking mind to pulsating spiritual energy field. And feel those pulsations trickle down through your nervous system throughout your entire body. Feel that pulsating energy through your palms and your arms, through your upper body, and through your lower body. Feel that you have moved into the deeper part of your energy body. Because you are react, you are completely relaxed. Your energy field is undivided whole. There is no separation between your inner energy body field and the cosmic energy. Feel there is no separation between you, your own inner body and the cosmic body. Feel the complete harmony, balance within and without. There is no inside and outside to the energy being that you are now. Feel that now you have shifted from time-bound thinking mind to timeless energy body and the soul being that you are. Feel the new sense of peace tranquility and stillness descend upon you and shower you with the grace divine. Mm. Allow yourself to drop into the deepest level of tranquility, peace, and stillness. And you are connected 
to the soul being presence, God within. This is what Christ meant when he said, be still and know that I am God. Realize that you have awakened and connected to the presence of God within yourself. Feel that your identification with your false ego mind is rocked. You have established the relationship with who you are, the divine presence. Be quindered with yourself. Now you have broken the false relationship with the false ego mind that you identify with as I am and you have reconnected with the being that I am, with the soul presence. Feel the completion, feel the oneness. The experience of oneness. You are in now. It's called by different names. We call it God. We call it love. We call it I am. We call it presence. We call it being. We call it yoga. But they are all the experience of oneness within. You have experienced the yoga of relationship between you and yourself with capital S, the true self that you are. Be 
Now bring your awareness back to your body. And remember, anytime you have any conflict between you and yourself, or you and other, or you and life situation, remember your reaction is coming from within you. Witness and withdraw from it and you will suddenly drop into relationship with who you are, the divine within you. Practice this meditation. I have done 10 guided meditations. And it gives many different ways to enter into it. You can select one or two that works most for you and practice it again and again and learn how to be in relationship with yourself and practice it in your relationship with others and you will get better in the outer and inner at the same time. You may now gradually open your eyes. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you so much. Do you see that is that that ten day meditation I have, ten different meditations, so powerful it can change your life completely because it has a philosophy and the guided meditation together. It's on our website. People can really practice. There is, in, there is no price to it because wh what is worth changing your life? <laughs> it is price. <laughs> there is no price to it. So that is my whole, many years I have practiced this. Finally, I have come to realize how it works. So that is what I have built into the meditation techniques that allows the people to be from self-caused suffering in relationship, particularly. Yeah. Well, thank you for being such an example of applying these teachings and bringing awareness to all of us and the tools, you know, from <laughs> the book that we can refer back to, to all that you have on the website. For those that haven't visited uh, amrityoga.org, there are some amazing tools and I know Guru Dev, you do weekly meditations uh, so people can come and get a teaching, enjoy a meditation with you live on Mondays and Fridays and all of that can be found on the website. And I just want to express my gratitude for today. Uh, it was an incredibly insightful conversation. Thank you. It was so nice 
to be with you and Catherine. Thank so, you. Thank you so, so much. An absolutely beautiful conversation. I will reiterate Danielle's words, fantastic resources. And um, we will put all the links to whether you're listening to this on the podcast or on Danielle's channel or my channel, all the links of how to connect in, get the book, access the meditations and the other resources that you've got will be below. Thank you so much for your time. We all very much appreciate you. Question answer session for all people who have heard this conversation it's not easy to un understand and practice in a practical life so i think as they cannot question i can answer that would be yeah. wonderful that's so generous of you so please anyone watching this please do leave your comments below or connect in with daniel or, or i both our details will be below and we can take you up on that really kind offer because I think never has there been a time more when people need to be putting this into place. So thank you. We will get that arranged. You're welcome. Namaste. Namaste.